never seen before. Now the Chester heater and I studied for uh, 16 years. Okay, so I mean, it's, this needs to be studied. And I certainly can't do it. And all these things that I've, all the ones that are there that have numbers, I've discovered those all new. That's what's going to go on here. Okay, this is how the Chester heater comes in. And I showed you that here's the kite and here's the triangle. Here's the real one. This is bronze. Okay, there's the next one. This is number 15. Never seen before. really neat is this, this goes like this. That's beautiful. Think of that. This is, has ever seen this? You're the first. I've never shown it to anyone. I'll show this Sebastian. <laughs> okay, here's another. This is, uh, this is 12. So interesting, this is also the dodecahedron. This is also 12. This is what this looks like. This is too heavy. <laughs> from 19 circles. This comes from 19 circles. I explained this the last time I gave a lecture. These are the 19 circles. They make a circle. There's 19 of them. There are 7 in the middle and 12 on the outside. So the chestahedron has 7 faces and it has 12 edges. The chestahedron. Well, this is new, okay? And you see, without the circle, that's what it comes from. This is a three-dimensional rendition of a two-dimensional form of 19. All right, here it goes. 
Dios. All the forms come out of this. The triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, Decatrius here, tetrahedron, octahedron, icosahedron, chestahedron. I'm pointing out where it is in the form, but I'm not showing you where it is. But I'm showing you. I'm not showing how it, how it happens, but it's there. That's where I got all these forms. All of these forms are just under here. So here's a whole form here now that can be used by people to find out a whole bunch of forms I don't have time or the interest in doing. It's too much. It's just way beyond me. Okay, I've got to, I've got to pull back and do other things. But in this form, um, <clears throat> which I feel is, it's not an earth form. It's an expansive form. It's a form that comes from the other side. And I've had people that say, oh my gosh, be careful of that. Don't put that in. There's beings that are coming in, coming in and out of it. So <clears throat> everything you see here is for sale. That's how we survive here. Okay. All of these forms and all these prints and all these drawings are all for sale. Everything you see, okay, it's a way to make money here for us to go on. So you're going to say, well, where did that, none of those 19 circles come from? And how come nobody else found this? All right, so before I tell you where this 19 circles come from, uh, I went to, um, I went on a, a journey with Yuko to Europe for about, I don't know how many months, and I gave lectures all over. And my last lecture was in England. And I got a call from a place, uh, a guy in Ireland. Uh, he wanted me to come. I said, no, I'm sorry, but I'm finished. And on my plane ticket, I'm leaving tomorrow. <clears throat> and um, I, I can't do it. He said, well, I'll pay for the plane ticket. I'll pay for, oh, the whole thing, whatever. Just because there was uh, 200 people who want to hear your lecture. So I said, OK. People went home, and I went to Ireland. When I got there, yeah, it was a big lecture, a lot of people in this filled the hall, but that wasn't the reason he asked me to come there. He asked me to come there because he wanted me to show, he wanted me to see something uh, that he thought I might be able to understand. So he took me to these Irish high crosses. And I nothing to do with them. I, I, I didn't even know much about them. I see a picture of them, that's it. But when I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe what I see. And I told him what I saw, and he was shocked. He says, oh, I've never seen that before. And I said, yeah, it's just it's what I see. So um, I was really excited about the High Cross. So I came back in 2010, and I bought all of the materials to make a High Cross. Big, and I waited six years to do it. I didn't touch it for six years. And when I was cured from cancer, the third day after I was cured from cancer, I looked at the book again of the Irish, Irish High Crosses, and I, I then saw another thing. So I said, ah, that's it. There's something here to telling me. And then uh, I got a story on it. And so I did. So, I worked, <clears throat> I worked on it, and I made sketches first of the high cross. Here's the, the drawing, and I hope this is on the way. But here's the sketches that I, these are my drawings that I do. These are all original, um, and they're studies, because, see, all these circles are in there. So there's the one in the middle here of the purple ones, and it comes out. Here they are going all the way around, and here's the ring. Okay, so I found out that the high crosses which are basically uh, in, in the uh, they were developed in the 6th century they were developed in the 6th century and I found out that even before Christ was born they were doing high crosses 
Okay, not in Ireland, but around other parts of the world. Okay, so the High Cross, okay, he invited me over because he said that I think that the people, the Irish people in around the 5th or 6th century were hiding something because they were being invaded. And that's, he said, well, what are they trying to hide? He said, well, we don't know, but we think it's the fifth chamber of the heart. And that's why I asked you to come over here, not to get the lecture. So, I found the fifth chamber of the heart geometrically. And I looked up there. And I said, well, yeah, the center you know, has seven. Some of them have seven. Some of them are just a circle. But that's not what I saw. <clears throat> so, after the cancer was over, I saw that even more than I saw the first time. So I made it. And this is an Irish high cross. And that's based on 19 circles. And that's how they look. So what I saw immediately, and then what I saw when I had done with cancer, again I saw it, but I saw it even more that these crosses are not under somebody who is buried. Okay, they're in front of buildings, they're in front of churches, they're in graveyards, but they're basically a monument, and they're usually on the border, but there's never anybody buried under And this is small, they're huge. And so what I saw is that this is, this represents a celebration. And I was celebrating that the cancer being gone, and I saw the celebration even more. So these are bells. Here's a bell right here, and this is the clapper. And the bell is moving like this. It comes along here. There's four bells, and then there's this huge bell that has the clapper coming on the top. You're looking up into the bell. That's a celebration. This is celebration. Celebrating and crossing the threshold. This is celebrating death. Wow. Because there's these people who believe in an afterlife. And this is not, death is not a depression. Okay, it's a celebration. And at the same time, I found this on the internet. I don't know why, I've never seen one. I look at it all the time. This is a real clapper of a bell that's around 300 years old. So that's what a clapper looks like. So um, this is uh, a really cute little guy. <laughs> this is the organic shape of the seven-sided form, which I think. And of course, this is the heart. This is the left chamber of the human heart. And then the other part comes around here, which is the right chamber. So uh, this is a hollowed out uh, Venus form. This is uh, a chestahedron that's turned inside out. If I turn the chestahedron inside out, this is what it looks like. Uh, Sebastian made a big one back there, a white one. This is the chestahedron with edges only, okay, and planes. Only planes. So this is the chestahedron that's basically like this. And this comes out of this. And there it is, and here it shows you. Here's the kite and the triangle. Comes out of 42 triangles. This one here is a goat, I call this a decatria. This is a decatria because this is what happens when you push corners of the chetahedron like I showed you with the cube. But the difference is, is that to take the chetahedron and push edges or Corners doesn't work. You have to do both. You have to push points and edges at the same time. And what the decision you have to do is to make on which which edges do I push, or which edges, you know, or points do I push. 